Okay. Um, I'm Patricia Combo, a four-year student from Moy University, pursuing bachelor's degree in communications and journalism. And beside that, I'm the founder of Patri Initiative, whereby I'm trying to bring back the 4K clubs by incorporating school pupils in tree planting activities, climate change mitigation, and also with the name of Help in Kenya attain 10% 10, 10 forest cover. I'm a writer and passionate about nature. Wow, so th that is Patricia. Hapa kuna mtu ujui kweli, lakini hawa tuote wezi fanyi introduction. Mm. But most of them unawajua. Yeah. Yeah, so hawa watu wanajua, no, you have had, we have had you say you are the founder of Patri Initiative. Yeah. Yes, but now we know about Patri Initiative, but we don't know their mission, what you do in Patri Initiative, how it's different from other initiatives. So basically, what does Patri Initiative do? Okay, the main goal, the main aim that uh, Patri Initiative was started or was established is to educate young people on environmental education, because when we talk of environment in Kenya, Environmental, when you talk of education in Kenya, environmental education is often left out. So I saw the need of bridging the gap and educating the young people on environmental awareness and giving them a voice and training them to act on mitigation of climate change. And the other thing, another mission that we started by two was to help Kenya attain 10% forest cover through tree planting because currently our forest coverage is at 7.4%, which is below the required forest coverage. The minimum should be 10. That's why we wanted to help Kenya. We wanted to green Kenya and help Kenya attain forest coverage of 10% through tree planting and through working with pupils. And the other, the other mission or other goal that we started by three was to adapt a farm or to secure farms because tree planting is a form of climate smart agriculture techniques through agroforestry, through planting of fruit trees and non-fruit trees, so as to ensure we, we help future farmers in, in stabilizing weather patterns and giving them a better climate for them to carry on the agricultural work. Wow, you have talked of the biggest mission from your presentation, Nikama Nikupanda Miti. So, how many yeah. trees have you planted so far? So far, since I started Patri, but tree planting has been part of me when I was growing up because I come from a family where we are farmers and we plant trees. But ever since we started Patri, I visited nine schools and we planted over 7,000 trees because we are using the seed boss technology and the seed boss, but the use of seed boss is an easy way of planting trees and reforestation because they are balls which whereby you just draw, but the normal trees they are, I can count up to 5,000 the normal trees. Wow. But again, Patricia, somebody might ask now that you are a young girl, and uh, most people who are doing things to give back to the society are doing in forms of uh, youth all women empowerment all wana ingia ngoma wana wana ingia industry ya entertainment but you choose environmental change so what what inspired you what inspired you to venture into environmental climate change Okay, first of all I know when you talk of environment people take environment to be a to be a boring topic compared to entertainment, music, and other topics. Yeah, but the reason why I chose climate change, climate action, is because the everything, all our solution, be it health, be it the oxygen we breathe, be it the water that we drink, be it the weather patterns, be it the, the clothes that we wear, they all come from nature. And without nature, we can't survive. All our solutions are in nature. And I saw nature degrading and I realized it, my, my main way of giving back to community because you know, being raised in a community, 
going to school, there's something that you feel passionate about helping the community. And the reason I chose Patrice is because I'm a daughter of a farmer. I've grown in the slopes of Mboni, where we used to do farming. And along the way, the weather patterns started to become unpredictable. And I saw most of women who, who in the Kenyan setting, they are the ones who do major or a lot of farming. I saw them strain, you know, struggling to farm. And at the end, the weather patterns will, will mess them up. And at the end goal, the vulnerable children, the innocent ones, who are maybe have never, who are not part of, you know, degrading the land they suffer because they lack food. And in through that, through seeing people suffer and farmers suffer, I realized I could help them through climate smart agriculture. That involves tree planting, so as to ensure we stabilize weather patterns and we give them a better climate, a better climate. And last year in March, I happened yes. to, visit, to visit Lodwa. It was during the time we had the prolonged drought and there was this campaign, Kenyans for Kenya. And I was among a team that was selected to take relief food to Lodwa. And we stayed there for five days minus the travel days. So it was a one week experience in Lodwa. The sun was scorching and seeing the, the innocent faces of you know, the children, they are suffering, there's no shed, you know, it gave me a motivation to, to, to be their voice, to act for them, and also to equip them with skills so that they can speak for themselves. And by giving them voice, it's through empowering them to take care of environment, because unless we teach them how to act, unless we teach them on how to preserve the environment at tender age, maybe they may never value the efforts of other environmentalists and activists because we say once you fetch your own water you'll value the you'll value every drop so i saw the need to give the young generation a voice and also to ensure they have a test of what we had when we were growing because when we were growing we grew in you know uh there were homes we had a lot of forest we had a lot of streams the food that we ate was was quite well but along the along the way you see the food that we eat sometimes is substandard some of streams have, have dried up so i want to act for the future generation so that they can have a taste of the life that we had when we were growing up and that's why i chose to work with the young people so that i train them at tender age on how to act and how to preserve what what nature can really offer to us Wow. Uh, personally, I've been following you via your blogs, your social medias, and there is so much you do about agriculture. And I read an article where you said that um, the future of agriculture is in the youth, right? Yes. Uh, so what, does, what do you mean by the future of agriculture lies in, ag in the youth when, again, youth are reluctant in joining agriculture? Okay, first, I, I usually pose this question. How many times do you eat? You eat on basic, you can eat more than three times, but the, the, out, the outlined number, we need farmers three times a day. We, you, we need farmers in the morning, we need farmers during lunchtime, and we need farmers at supper. And agriculture is one vital thing that, that, may, that any nation cannot do without. And the reason why I said we are the future of agriculture because we have potential, we have brains, we have energy, and we are creative. And I will narrow them down. We have, we have energy. And when I talk of energy, it's not the physical energy. We have the energy to, to, to solve problems that maybe people face when they are doing agriculture. People are very, the youths are very creative and innovative because you'll find a youth who has gone to either tertiary college or they have gone to university and they gain skills either by the use of technology or even by the use of their communication skills and the use of social media and you find through through their innovation they can bring a solution to agricultural they can bring a, a solution to the agricultural sector and when we talk of the youth being the 
the, fu the, the, fu the face of the agriculture. Mm -hmm. Technology mm -hmm. is advancing day in, day out, and new methods of doing things are coming up, and climate disruptions is also an effect of what we are facing. And because the youth, they have um, a grasp of information and they are connected to the outside world, they are able to grasp new technologies on which when they apply to agriculture, we will will yield a lot of youth, unlike our old parents who are old and who, who use the, the old ways of farming to produce food. And again, they, with the youth, we have problem solvers because you'll find someone will, will, have, will harvest their tomatoes and because maybe they lack, they lack facilities on storing them, you'll find some, um, a farmer will rather sell them at a draw, draw away price. But if you have a youth who is innovative, if you have a youth, they will become in innovative and come up with measures of preserving tomatoes either by adding value, what we call value addition to those tomatoes, either by sun drying them, by inventing cooler boxes, by, by producing something out of that. Because like we saw, there is one youth in Kisti, he was a he was a white. There, there is, is a youth. youth in in Kisi County, she was okay. something at Nyawira. She, last year, she was awarded a award by the president because she was adding value to excessive bananas. We know Kisi is Kisi has a history of production of bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she collects the excessive bananas and she she produces a wine and crisps from the bananas. We have a wine which is made of the excessive bananas from 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 the land. So the youths are very creative in coming up with innovations so as to ensure that we have less of food waste and also to ensure they, they, they come up with innovations so to ensure farmers do not incur losses. Wow. So, so majorly, uh, the only way youth can venture into agriculture is through mechanization, like bringing the technology and energy that they have into agriculture. Yes. Because most and people also think they agriculture... Can... Yes, because most people think agriculture is going to the shamba, umebeba jembe, wende ulime. That's what mm. they call agriculture. Yeah, but agriculture is wide. It's not going to the farm and digging. There are a lot of value chains involved in agriculture. You can you can create an application whereby you link farmers to the market directly without the brokers. You can mm -hmm. come a lot with. There are a lot of things which the youth can be involved in farming. You can even choose to offer timely advice and you know share knowledge to the farmers. Even you can get to the farm and you know you farm because we have the energy, we have the skills, and you know nobody says the old person they are the one to farm. And ukuli masio shamba. You find people who have masters, people who have degrees. They are leaving the offices and going to them to the farm because I believe the next billionaire will, will be a farmer. Because if you see, let's check a real example during COVID-19. People left their offices. We've, we've got people being sacked from their jobs, but we have one constant thing that is remaining, agriculture. People who are doing farming, they have become the massive essential service providers who the world is looking up to. That means agriculture is the, is the ultimate goal for, uh, for everything. No matter what, no matter how advanced we are, we cannot eat our money. We'll need to go back to the farm and get something to feed. So I believe agriculture has a big potential whereby the youth need to tap the opportunity and also create an earning because over 70% of youths are jobless and they are looking for white collar jobs. Little do they know there's a lot of potential back in the village, back in the arable land that they have left looking for white collar jobs. Wow, that's good. Now, you just mentioned about COVID-19, which is a pandemic affecting almost everybody in the world. And in that case, it has affected jobs, affected people's plans. Uh, are there plans you had scheduled which have been affected by the corona pandemic? Oh, yes. I was invited for Africa Week, which was supposed to be held in Uganda for five days. It was supposed to be in March, 
which was cancelled due to the COVID-19. Also, I was invited for, how do you call it, the devolution conference that was supposed to be held in, we had two devolution conference, one for the youth, which was supposed to be held in Kericho, and the, the, the mega devolution conference that was supposed to be held in Makweni County, they both have been postponed due, due to corona. And I had plans to do during World Forest Day, Earth Week, Earth Day of tree planting and creating awareness in schools, which also have been altered by Corona. Even the today is World Environment Day, and if there was no Corona, I would have joined students in celebrating and healing nature by planting trees. But because of wow. COVID nineteen, you know, everything has gone virtual. But yes, also let, let me interrupt you in a minute. I want to call for a break because this one goes for 40 minutes, but yeah. please rejoin in, in two minutes time. We, we call for part two. Okay. Zoom meetings go for 40 minutes, so we are going for a break, but we are resuming immediately. Okay. Okay. 